Hi, my name's Phil. And my name is Rob. And we've been mates for years. We've done loads of stuff together. All of which, mainly, have turned into chaos. But someone then suggested, why don't you do a podcast? That seemed like a good idea, didn't it? Really, really did. Then we realised neither of us have ever done one of those. So is this going to work? Well, we'll find out, won't we? Welcome to Two Pastors in a Pod. It's another two pastors in the pod. If this is the first time you've joined us, we're really pleased to see you here. We're fairly normal uh, fellas, aren't we? Indeed, indeed. In fact, this is the so-called so -called spooky version today, isn't it? Because this is wow. meant to be going out on a day that, as kids, when we were kids, we didn't yeah. celebrate. But apparently now it's just, well, we know. We go into the shops and we see, see yep. Halloween is everywhere. everywhere. Should we be worried about it? What's spiritual warfare really about? Before we get to that, you know, we, we're fairly... Normal blokes, not necessarily the most academic. Well, one At least of one of us is. One, one of us is. Come on, what were you like at school? What were you like at school? I was, I was, I was a nice boy. Okay. Were you? Occasionally, I was. I was, so, I was all right. No, no, no. I was. All were right. you a scrapper? Were you a fighter? Well, well, I got involved in maybe a couple of fights. Did you? Yeah. You see, I went to a school with two thousand boys, and to be honest. I was more of a negotiator well, I than was, a scrapper. I, well, I, I, I talked my way out of Well, problems. in our junior school, I was meant to be second best fighter. I, I, I only had, what I only ever had, did you go to where you had standards of I only had I only ever had one fight, but I became second best fighter. Did you? Okay. Yeah, well, as I say, I tended to avoid... But you you followed your dad into boxing, didn't you? Well, did you know no, about I boxing? Didn't, no, I didn't, I didn't follow... I mean, I didn't box. I mean, you can tell by my face, because it's such a pretty face, <laughs> that, I, that I didn't do a lot of boxing. But my dad boxed for the army. Right. So he he taught me a little bit about how, how you box. And then I used to... Used to we had a... A friend of ours used to have his garage open and we used to go around and knock seven bells out of each other. So did you spar properly? Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. Well, so come on, show us the, show us the, the, the how do you stance. Yeah, do you stance? really want to get into the ring with yeah, me? Yeah, come on, show us your stance. So just so you know, this is all about spiritual warfare today. So we're, gonna about, to, we're about to have a battle. So well, what well, you do, you, just, you've always got to keep right. your guard. Were well, you quick? I was, I was not that quick, clearly. I was it. See, a lot faster. See the hands float like a butterfly, sting See, like a bee. I, mean, that. I can take it like a man. <laughs> just, just, I can. Well, yeah, you've always got to keep your guard up, and then you throw a punch. Then you throw a punch, yeah. but you don't do that we'll live. Get back to that a little bit later. Well, my dad, my granddad, my granddad fought. Granddad? Uh, yeah, he served with the British Army in Egypt during the Second World War. Yeah, and he didn't used to talk a huge amount about it, but he did say that there was one rule. You never went out on patrol, yeah. and you never faced an enemy without having a brew first. Brilliant segue. What a segue. Brilliant segue. So we've got a brew today, have we? Cup of teas. we got a brew today. It's slightly yeah. different teapot today. A nice teapot today. This is a very nice it's teapot. Nathan's daughter's teapot. It is. It's very, very nice. But yes. um, this is a Winnie the Pooh teapot, and I don't know quite what this is going to taste like. Okay. So this is a, a special brew. Uh, at least it doesn't look as it usually does. No. So this is more of a pink colour. Yeah, yeah. uh, and you've spilt it all over the table. Oh, well, um, I'm there sure Nathan will wipe you off later. Yeah. Um, so this is more of a pinky type colour, but there's a good reason why I've got this one today. Because this, yes. this is Cheers. Tetley's. Cheers. Cheers. This is Tetley's Defence. It's called Defence, Defense. which I thought was really appropriate for the subject that we're dealing with. There's no um, use sitting on it, you know. Oh, not the fence, defence. No, defence. It's very good, yes. Clearly, clearly, you're punch drunk. Um, so, um, it's a fruity tea. It's a fruity tea. Fruity. Uh, see what you got in it. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, it's something an aftertaste, though. What's, that's not bad. Okay, I'm getting strawberries. Yeah, strawberries are straightforward. What's the aftertaste in it? Um, probably hasn't washed the teapot out for five years. <laughs> um, well, it's all right, yeah. That's elderflower. That's elderflower on you. So what's in the packet then? So it's a mixture of fruits uh, and leaves that supposedly defend your uh, immune system. So where did you get your defence from? Well, I picked that up from somewhere we were passing today. Oh, and really? I happened to see it there. Yeah. And I thought, that will suit for today. But most people can get it from Aldi. Can't most they? people can get it from Aldi, but there are other shops out there, of obviously. But well, while we're talking about shops, yes. 
It is Halloween. It is. And, and I've been in the shops this week, and to be honest, I, for weeks and weeks, actually, yeah. I've been horrified by just it's how changed. much there is. It has changed over the years, hasn't it? So so when I was a lad, we back in the day, mm -hmm. way back in the day, so you're looking at 60s going into 70s, Halloween was just not celebrated. I was in the clubs, and, and we would have something like maybe Doug, Doug not Doug, Duck apple, which you used to, you know, you have to go and look at dunk. Is it dunk? Dunk. I thought what were you doing with the duck? Well, I, I, I always thought it was duck apple. No, it's dunk. Dunk oh. for an apple. All right, well, you have to do dunk apple, didn't you? <laughs> it was clearly different. different. Anyway, you got your face wet, and that was that was it. That was, that was, <laughs> sorry, I'm just wondering where you got a duck from in the middle of Liverpool. I've always called it duck apple. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, anyway, so that was that, that that to be a serious. Problem. I know it's a serious subject. <laughs> it's a very serious. But anyway, yeah, Halloween's changed, so it's become very Americanized and and actually a lot more sinister. But do you think it's just commercial, or or as Christians, uh, should we be uneasy with with what's going on? Because one of the things I I have a concern about is that not just for kids, but for all of us, is yeah. that the 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 expansion of Halloween seems to trivialise yeah. something that the Bible is very, very clear about, yeah. that, that there is a spiritual warfare. There are demons. There are yeah. uh, those that are, are from Satan who desire to crush the Christian. Yeah. And Halloween to them, to, to those who follow after Satan, mm -hmm. there are an increasing number mm -hmm. of, of people who do that. Then Halloween is a, is a big event for them, isn't mm -hmm. it? But it shouldn't be a big event for us, should it? I, I, I don't think so. I mean, for, for me, it's something that I would want to, to avoid. Yeah. Um, but spiritual warfare, one of the things about spiritual warfare is it's real. It is very, it, very it, real. It's, it's a real thing. And, and if we experience that yeah. as Christians, then we need to identify not just what that looks like, yeah. but who's behind that. Well, for, yeah, well, for me, there are, there are three aspects to spiritual warfare. There's... There's the fact that we are fallen. You know, mm -hmm. go back to Genesis chapter three, and we were we were tempted by by darkness to, to move out of the light and move into the darkness by Satan himself. And ever since then, we've had this battle, this inward battle with our our fallen nature, which mm -hmm. is sin, and that happens every single day. You know, we, and the Bible is quite clear that yeah. we are all sinners by nature, not by nurture. That's right. And then secondly, then you've got the, the prince of the power of the air who organizes the pattern of this world. And he has a limited dominion over this world. So there is a supernatural force that is at play in almost everything that, that happens around us because he is the prince of the power of the air. I mean, one of the problems the is when people think of the devil, yeah. they, they think of the guy with the pointy horns yeah. and the red face and the fork and the tail. Yeah. But that's that, that came through the Baroque period of artwork. Yeah. That's the artist's impression of what satan looks like the bible doesn't have that picture at all no, satan prowls around like a roaring lion that's what peter said you know and, and comes as a sheep uh, and he has his his, his demonic power and, and the, there are demons as well the angels and demons are not just fictional stories they, no. they are it is very very real. And, and the bible warns us doesn't it and as christians we don't actually speak a lot about this do we? it's one of the subjects we, we tend to try and keep well covered over yeah. but the bible is quite clear when paul writes to the ephesian christians it is quite clear now Ephesians six twelve that your battle, your wrestling, yeah. not with flesh and blood, not with, with humans, yeah. um, but against rulers and against powers and against authorities and against the powers of darkness yeah. in this present age. Yeah. And I mean, we we live at a time where not just Halloween. Look at the film industry. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the film industry, we know that many of the horror films that we see have got a basis. In fact, yeah, and in reality, well, that's it. Well, where do where do people imagine these things from? You know, and I, that's what I always think. So I, I personally stay clear of horror films because I think they're quite dark. And yeah, that cannot be helpful for for us as Christians. Knowing we were going to do this, yeah. um, I went and watched. Um, I've only watched one episode of you know these hauntings. You, know, you go to the program, and they take a team and they go to the most haunted house in Britain or Scotland or. In America, and I mean, a lot of it's complete drivel. Uh, I mean, it's it's yeah. obviously playing up to the camera. And, yeah. However, there are other aspects of that yeah. where these guys clearly haven't got a clue what they're messing with. 
Uh, and, and I think anything that has to do with the occult, yeah, well, I, I, is a danger. Well, we both had experience, haven't we? Yeah. You know, you've been a pastor for thirty years. Yes. I've been a pastor for for twenty years. But even before I, I was a pastor, I remember um, one evening in our house back in back in Liverpool. I was about thirteen or fourteen, and my, my sister and her boyfriend, um, he was really into he was really into the Ouija board. Yeah. And he set it up in, in our kitchen and uh, I, I sat because I was a kid, didn't know what I was doing. I sat there and, and uh, anyway, it was scary. And in fact, my dad, who wasn't a Christian at the mm -hmm. time, he, he came in because it was getting very scary in the room. The, the glass was going mad and all of that. And, and, and my dad came in and he, he just did this. He cleared the table. He said, do not mess with these things. And even, even he knew. That. I was going to say, isn't that interesting? A non-Christian... Yeah. Somebody who wouldn't say they had a faith yeah. could see the dangers. Uh, I mean, in my experience as a pastor, um, I've been involved in all kinds of uh, assisting people, uh, including missionaries who have been in other countries uh, where they've been involved. But, but one of the strangest experiences I, I had was um, in Africa. Yeah. Uh, I was there with a missionary uh, and we were, we were doing the touristy bits. Uh, and then we'd been advised to go to uh, this warehouse that uh, had a lot of uh, African art. And we did that and we'd look around and picked up a few things to bring home. And, and then the owner of the shop said, well, if you want the real stuff, it's at the back. Mm. And so we thought we'd go down. So we wandered down. And as we got closer to the back of this warehouse, there was clearly something on the move. Uh, and both of us felt it independently, and, yeah. and we left that shop and everything in it, yeah. uh, and walked away. And that's not just being emotional. That's not being kind of emotionally screwed up. The Bible is quite clear. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you will come under attack. Uh, and the, the thing well, is, we've got to know the threat that we're under. There are spiritual forces. You know, Ephesians makes it quite clear. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authority, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. The occult is on the increase. Mm -hmm. our, our kids in school are, are becoming fascinated by this, mm -hmm. fascinated by what is dark, instead of being fascinated by what is light, because yeah. there is the alternative, there is yeah. Jesus, and we've had more experience, haven't we? As we've, have, as, you know, I've, I've experienced um, um, up close. Uh, people call them ghosts, but this was a this was a, a demonic presence in in the room. So so I was in the kitchen in broad daylight with with my wife Jill, the dog, our Chester when he was alive. He was he was there in the kitchen, and then the dog started barking, and, and I was like, "What are you barking at?" Just a very bark and then I looked over, and then there was just this dark shadow, very real dark shadow, um, moving across the kitchen. And uh, I looked at Jill, and Jill looked at me, and I said, "Did you see it?" And she said, "Yeah." And the dog was going mad. Yeah. And since then, that's happened on on two or three occasions. There are those powers out there yeah. that sometimes reveal themselves well people are scared to talk about this aren't they? i mean i think one of the things for us is that when we talk about spiritual warfare like any warfare it, it's not just in the trenches mm. it, it comes on many different fronts and, and, and the bible again is quite clear satan is clever yeah and, and he will he'll manipulate passages of scripture uh, he will deal with um that instilling of fear over all sorts of things and doubt I mean, look at Genesis and, and, and the Garden of Eden. You've got Adam and Eve. The, the, Satan comes and he says, did God really say there's that seed of doubt? And then relationships. Yeah. I mean, Satan can step into a relationship and just break that up. So there's lots of different manners well, in which he works. Yeah, he, he, he sometimes reveals himself tangibly, like like that experience in the kitchen, like your, mm. your experience that you've just mentioned. And I know you've had more experience, yeah. but we probably haven't got time to talk all about them. But but he does, he reveals himself like that, but also he can be quite subtle. So for many, many years, Jill and I were witness, witnessing to an, an individual about the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and um, they were neighbours of ours. And anyway, this particular neighbour, she said to us, look, you've got to stop talking to me mm. about Jesus. Why is that? Well, every night when you've spoken about Jesus, I have these really, really dark 
satanic dreams and, and, and they scare me. That's yeah. why, please don't talk to me about Jesus. So I thought, oh, wow, this is real, isn't it? This is real. So we did, we, we backed away for a while. But anyway, years later, praying for this individual, um, we, we went to church one Sunday. I was I was quite ill, actually. I was oppressed spiritually and uh, I was struggling. And uh, we'd gone to stay at their house. They'd moved and we'd gone to stay at their house. And she said to me, you need to go to church, Rob. I said, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to go to church today. She said, no, you need to go to church. I'll take you. So we all went. Um, the four of us here, husband and Jill and I, we went to this church. And you know what? She took communion that day, which perhaps some would argue that she shouldn't have, but but she took it. And while she was taking communion, it was like the, the spiritual blinkers were removed. Yeah, a bit like Paul she, on the road. She to turned minutes. to me in tears and she said, it is very real. Jesus yeah. is very, very real. You see, Jesus will always triumph over the darkness. The devil, I, the devil thinks he has the victory, but he doesn't. And that's the, that's the reality, isn't it? Uh, and I, I think the other reality is, is that in our own communities, um, you know, there are witches, there are wizards, there are those who are satanic worshippers. Yeah. And we as Christians need to be cautious yeah. uh, of how we deal with those individuals. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the New Testament talks about the sons of Sceva, who, who decided that they could just go and cast out demons here, there and everywhere, uh, where in fact, you know, Satan realised that they actually we're not doing that in the name of Jesus. Uh, but the Bible says, look, if, if we're going to face that attack, we need to put on the armour of God. Yeah. We talk about that a lot. I mean, you've read the same book as I have. Yeah. Uh, B.B. Warfield wrote a, 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 an epic book on the, the, the Ephesians uh, and the armour of God. We shouldn't be afraid. A.W. Pink wrote a good one as well. But yeah, go on. So, I mean, we shouldn't be afraid. Yeah. Should well, we? the Bible tells us 2 Corinthians... Chapter 2, I think it's 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11, says that we're not unaware of Satan's schemes. So we know yeah. what he's up to, and we know he, he, he's out there. So we do need, back to the boxing, we do need to keep our guard up. And, and one of the means by doing that is to, is to meditate over the armour of God that we have. We do have the spiritual weapons to fight the battle against the darkness that, that is out there and the darkness that is within as well. So... There is the, the helmet of salvation. Yeah, I mean, we could do the whole lot. The helmet of salvation, the shield of peace, the shield of faith. The breastplate of righteousness, the, the, the belt, belt of truth. Jesus used the belt of yeah. truth, didn't he? he? When he was tempted by the devil, he said, it is written. So we're to use scripture in our fight against the battle. We have the sword of the spirit, which which pierces hearts. And if we're in tune with the spirit, then we can go into battle with the spirit. Well, for me, and then the, the shoes of gospel peace, of course, because we... We move forward with the gospel. But the, for me, I bet it's the same as me. But for me, the the most important of of all the, the arm is the shield yeah. of faith, yeah. because that's the one that extinguishes the fiery darts that come directly for Satan. So the the more faithful we are, the the more we we increase our faith, then the stronger we are going into battle. In my experience as a pastor, you know. One of the things in dealing with the things of, uh, of the occult or Satan, um, it, it, prayer is, is in the forefront. Yeah. That when we face those issues, when we sense those issues, praying in the name of Jesus, that is our defence, that is our, our position, yeah. uh, that we pray and we come and we bring these things to God unashamedly. Yeah. And we pray very directly and very clearly. But it must be in the name of Jesus Absolutely. because that is where our strength is found. I mean, well, let me ask power, you. There's power in his name, isn't it? And there's power, course, there's power in the blood of Jesus as well. I mean, there's going to be some parents watching uh, on, on this podcast particularly saying, well, my kids are growing up with all this coming in. And we've talked about parenting before on podcasts. But, you know, in terms of advice, how do we advise our parents of their kids who are facing it, whether that's on films, whether that is at school, whether that's in the books they read. You know, how do we advise our Christian parents to, to help their kids navigate through this spiritual battle for the mind and the soul? Well, the first thing you've got to do is teach them, is, is to teach them a better way. And that mm -hmm. comes through you sitting down and going with your kids through Scripture, you talking about the contrast between darkness yep. and light, and, and again, making... Our kids understand without scaring them that there are there are forces at work, and that 
for us to be able to face those forces, we need to be strong in the Lord. So, so we so we teach. And then the other thing, we have to discern, don't we? We have to discern all of the usual stuff, you know, the, the, their use of social media, yeah. the television programs that they watch, just so that you can build because, them up in the faith when, when they're young. Teach yeah, but that's fine. The but you, they you, go. You've raised teenage kids. I've raised yeah. teenage kids. Um, we can do that, certainly in their younger years. And, and if we do it in our younger years, hopefully that, that mindset will stay with them. Uh, the teenage years are a different ballgame. They're hard enough as it is. Yeah. Um, but at teenage years, there's a lot more freedom. Yeah. Um, and it's because you're old. It's because you're out of touch. It's because you're mum and dad. Well, well you are. <laughs> uh, it's because this spiritual warfare, you, you, you're just kind of making that up. Yeah. How do you address that with your teenage kids? But again, it's the same though, isn't it? You know, the, they're still your kids. And you still have a level of authority over your kids. And you have to sit them down and explain just what's going on. Ultimately, unless your kids have a faith themselves, they won't, yeah, they won't, they won't, they, see they won't fully understand. No. So, so again, it's, you make sure you're praying yeah. for your children every day. And you're praying the Lord's protection over them every single day as well. Because we know what's out there. And we know the pressures that they're under. We're under enough pressures as it is, but our kids are under a lot more pressure, aren't they, in school? Especially if they make a stand yeah. for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because, if you know, it's like back to the trenches, back to the warfare. If if, if you're a soldier and you have to, and you raise your head above the parapet... You're going to get shot. You're going to get shot. Yeah. I mean, we, we also have a responsibility as churches, don't we? Uh, in our, as pastors, as church leaders, as churches... We do not deal with this stuff very often. Now, the other week uh, at TCC, you know, it just so happened as part of our regular study uh, in, in the books of the Bible, we came to talk about the Antichrist and we talked about how uh, the Apostle John in his letters uh, talked about what that looks like and what that means. But we, we tend to shy away from mm. these areas. Mm. Whereas, again, if we are consistently preaching through the Scriptures yeah. with our people, with our young people, that should automatically come into, you're in a battle. Yeah. Someone does not want you no. to follow Christ, to be committed. Yeah. There's so much that, that we, we just avoid because it's unpalatable. Well, again, the, the powers that are, are at work against us are seeking to bring us down in the faith. It's back to it's back to keeping your guard up. So it's that shield of faith, isn't yeah. it? Unless you keep your guard up, if you lower your guard, then the punches, the spiritual punches will come raining in. You know, sin, sin will, will and temptation will come flying in because you've got the strength of your faith is, is how high you keep your hands up, isn't it? Yeah. So, but if that's, if, if, if your guard is down, you will take the punches. And what the devil is trying to do, what the dark forces are trying to do is to make you unfruitful yeah. as a Christian. You're in the ring, back boxing analogy again, you're in the ring, but you're on the on you're on the canvas yeah. because you've let your guard down, you, you, you're punch drunk, so to speak, and then you're useless on the canvas. You're still in the ring, but you're not effective for the Lord. So the key for me, and this is the advice I always give to people, you've got to keep your guard up, you've got to go stronger in you, you've got to be strong in your faith. And how do you become stronger? And in your that's faith? the way, that's where we we set in place that regular communication with God, yeah. that opening of God's word, even if it's only a, a verse a day, that we read the scriptures, we talk to God. I mean, the spiritual main, warfare is a grace. Isn't yeah, it? I mean, we talked about October being not a great month. No, it's a dark month. Uh, it's a difficult month in weather terms yeah, and in people Halloween people, and all, all people, the other stuff. People get ill as yeah. well, very much so. But it's not just in October. No. Spiritual warfare for the Christian... The Christian particularly is on fire for God, yeah. that that spiritual battle is a daily occurrence. Constantly. And we need to be those who are well equipped. God's given us enough to say, okay, we will go into today yeah. seeking to hedge ourselves around. I mean, do you make... Do you it's a make, fight though, isn't it? Paul said to Timothy, yeah. fight the good fight of faith, Timothy. When you go to church on a Sunday, yeah. uh, obviously you, you preach, uh, you lead. Uh, do, do you go with a, a a sense of you know we're going into the field here we're going into the front line here i, I mean i always pray on the way into church lord just hedge us, hedge us around yeah. with your spirit yeah. because there 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 are evil ones no. who does doesn't want this church no, I who always, doesn't want this service. i always pray against the evil one yeah. i do and i always go 
feeling weak to the task. Yeah. You always do that, don't you? You feel your own depravity. Uh, yeah, but I mean, when you start going arrogantly into the pulpit, you shouldn't be in the pulpit. Though. If you think you can handle this without anybody else, it's we, we can we shouldn't do that. We can't, we can't go into battle on our own. We, no. have, we have to rest on the Lord Jesus Christ. My favourite hymn. Oh, yes. Please yeah. don't sing it. You can we, do the lyrics. We don't, don't, don't sing it. We don't sing this as much in the cellar church. But anyone who's, who's listened to this from, from Bethel Church, where I was at previously, they'll know what my favourite hymn is. And it was a hymn written by a, a young lady called Edith Cherry way back in the late 1800s. And she... She had a hard life. She was she she contracted an illness. It was polio, wasn't it? Yeah, very very young. So she was disabled, and then she had, eventually died at the age of twenty five. She had three strokes, but in in the time from I think about the, the age of fifteen through to to twenty five, she wrote lots of poems, mm -hmm. and her poems were always given. She said by the spirit of God. All she said she had to do was write them down because yeah. she was inspired to write them, and she wrote my favorite hymn. And I keep saying to Jill, at my funeral, it's this one. I keep I probably say that every week about different different. Yeah, probably yeah, lots of different. De definitely, if you happen to take my funeral, okay, if, or I, vice if, versa. if I peg it first, yeah. remember, remember this this one, and it goes like this. I'll just read the first verse because we don't want you to switch off. Absolutely so, not. So we rest on thee, our shield and our defender. We go not forth alone against the foe, strong in thy strength. Safe in thy keeping tender, we rest on thee and in thy name we go. Yeah. And that's the key. Yeah. Our strength for the battle yeah. is found in Jesus. So there's a reality in the battle, but there is hope in the battle as well. Yeah. That we are not alone. I mean, Romans 8, we are more than conquerors. Yeah. We are those who will stand, not on our own, yeah. but with God's strength. So in, in this month, in, in this Halloween period yeah. that the rest of the world's engaged with, take a time, get into the word of God, start to say, how do I defend? How do I stand up against this particular part of my spiritual journey? Yeah, I mean, one John, I mean, I can't find it right now, but one John, um, we, we preached this recently. Yeah, we did. We're, we're, not to, we're not to spend time in the darkness. We're not. We're not to be dragged into yeah. what is dark. And occultish and demonic we're to walk in the light so we're to put on Jesus every single day we're to seek his righteousness we're to do what is right and that is to be in the light don't have anything to do with what is dark so don't be foolish don't be those who, who stagger around just trying things out because everybody else is doing it uh, and I think for, for us as a church uh, for us as Christians the reality is in this spiritual warfare, victory absolutely belongs to Jesus Christ. We are and that's what we're... there is nothing yeah. to be afraid. In Christ Jesus, there is nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. So we well, that's the end of our, our podcast for, for this week. We're yes. really pleased you join us. Maybe you want to email in, maybe you've got some questions, maybe there's things you're struggling with. Yeah. The email address will come up at the bottom. Uh, and uh, we're really pleased that you've joined us on Two Pastors in a Pod. You can get this and all the other episodes on Spotify, uh, on YouTube, or wherever you can find your podcast. You do this, you know, you yeah, are absolutely hopeless. Anyway, what's that? Uh -huh. Funny, man. Anyway, see you, you soon. Bye. Bye.